All right, good morning. I'm glad that you're here. I hope that you have your Bibles ready. Let's go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 this morning. Uh, things continue as they were for, for now. We'll let you know uh, how things are going as far as our, our public meetings. Uh, Wednesday nights, we've started to meet again for prayer, 7 o'clock Wednesday night. But uh, I'm not sure uh, just yet what we'll do on Sunday mornings and, and Sunday nights. So uh, we'll, we'll let you know. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, I've mentioned there's a whole bunch of little instructions. I shouldn't say, say little, uh, short instructions right here at, at the end. And uh, we're going to read starting in verse 11, 1 Thessalonians 5. I want to read verses 11 through 22 to start with. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as also you do. And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you and are over you in the Lord, and admonish you, and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake, and be at peace among yourselves. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak, be patient toward all men, see that none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and all men. Rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks, for this is the of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Quench not the spirit, despise not prophesyings, prove all things, hold fast that which is good, abstain from all appearance of evil. And we'll just stop reading there. Paul had written this letter to the church at Thessalonica, and he was especially encouraging them to live for the Lord and to look for the Lord. Jesus is coming again, and that fact will change how you live. You know, if we really live like Jesus could come today, as we sometimes sing, uh, we would live differently than if we thought we have all the time uh, in the world. We started there in verse 11. He says, wherefore, you're living for the Lord, you're looking for the Lord. So wherefore, because of that, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as also you do. And what's he talking about there? He's talking about your church life. Yeah, as Christians, uh, we're not the Lone Ranger. <laughs> you know, we're not in this thing alone. Uh, we have the Lord, but He also puts us together uh, with other believers. Uh, he provides leadership, as we've seen in verses 12 and 13. He says to esteem and love your pastor. Uh, God expects partnership. Uh, you know, there's, there's your part. Uh, it's, it's not enough just that others do their part. We each have to do our, our own part as part of our church. Those, that's in verses 14 and 15, and of course other scriptures. But it's all based on our worship. Verses 16 through 22 uh, have to do with, with our worship. And we started last week with uh, rejoice evermore. Yeah, our, our attitude uh, toward and, and from the Lord. I, I find it very interesting what God brings up here as essentials. Things that are just real basic and, and simple uh, to the Christian life. I've had people say to me, oh, pastor, I wish I knew God's will for my life. Well, look at verses 16 through 18. Rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. <laughs> well, here's three things you, can, you know are God's will. Rejoice, pray, and be thankful. Now, what would stop us from doing those things? I can give you a whole list of, <laughs> of things that'll stop you. Uh, not believing, you know, doubt will cause you not to do that. Uh, selfishness, worldliness, uh, apathy or rebellion. Uh, there's plenty of things that'll stop us, but God can help us to do His will. God can help us to, to do these things. And uh, what a blessing it is to see what God has for us. You know, after rejoicing, uh, I see five basic essentials here to worship. Prayer, praise, Truth, godly living, and fellowship. Now, we haven't read all of that yet. But the first one is prayerfulness. Two simple words. Oh, I'm sorry, three. <laughs> I'm looking at verse 16. Verse 17, pray without ceasing. God wants us to always have the prayer line open. That's what he's saying there. You know, prayer should not be our last resort. Prayer should be our, our first choice. When we're facing the things of life, Prayer is part of rejoicing in the Lord. And remember, uh, this is written to a church, written to the church at Thessalonica. Now, we pray as individuals, but we also need to pray as a church. 
Uh, God tells us to pray. God also tells us how to pray. You can go back to the Gospels and, and other places. Uh, you know, in Luke 11, for instance, the disciples came to Jesus and said, uh, Jesus, teach us to pray. Jesus gave them the model prayer. And then he, he made some comments about, uh, you, you know, not, not giving up, being persistent in prayer. He tells us how to pray. God tells us why to pray. Uh, if you look in Ephesians chapter 6, I think this is a, a, a big part of, of prayer. Ephesians chapter 6 gives us the verses in verses 14 to 17 where he talks about our spiritual armor. In um, verse 14, stand with your loins girt about with truth, breastplate of righteousness, and a you know, whole list of, of spiritual things that we need to uh, be using in, in our Christian life. And verse 13 starts with, wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God. So what's the wherefore? Well, verse 12, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. We pray because we're in a spiritual battle and we need to use spiritual weapons. At the end of that list of, of spiritual armor, he says in verse 18, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Now, I find quite often prayer is one of the first things we drop off in our spiritual activities. Yeah, you know, we think, oh, well, you know, Lord knows. <laughs> there's a lot of reasons why people don't pray, but there's a lot of good reasons to pray. Uh, we're in a battle. We need to pray just to glorify the Lord. Uh, we need to pray to have fellowship with God. A and remember uh, this, uh, if he, in Ephesians, again, that's written to a church, written to the church at Ephesus. Uh, they needed to be praying together uh, as a church. We pray because we have needs. Maybe you don't, <laughs> but I do. <laughs> I think we all do. Well, we, we do. Uh, we need wisdom. God says if we lack wisdom, ask him. Uh, there's sometimes we need deliverance or help. Uh, we need forgiveness. But you know, we, we don't just pray because we have needs. We pray because others have needs too. Yeah. We pray for others. Uh, we pray to worship the Lord. Uh, I think that's so important. Uh, God says this is part of our worship. The second one that we come to there, or the next one, I, maybe I should say, in verse 18, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Another part of worship is thankfulness. Thankfulness. I find that there's many people who do not thank the Lord. Let me give you a couple of reasons why people don't thank the Lord. Some people think their life is just a result of luck. Well, it just happened. And so they don't thank the Lord when good things happen. Others are what you call fatalists. I've even heard Christians say, well, what will be will be. It must have been meant to be. And instead of looking to God and saying, thank you, Lord, they just say, well, that's just, that was just the way it was going to happen. Others believe in hard work. And they say, well, the reason this happened is because I deserve it. I work so hard. Listen, I can guarantee you, there's people who work just as hard as you do who don't have the blessings you do. Some who work harder. And when, when we have those reasonings in the back of our mind, we don't bother to thank the Lord. We say, well... But God says part of worship is to, to thank him. As Christians, we believe in the goodness of God. James wrote in James 1.17, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. God doesn't have one single day when he's bad. God is always good. Oh, I'm glad. Every good gift comes from God. And uh, when good things happen in our life, that's the, especially the time to thank him. But he says, in everything, give thanks. We give thanks in everything. It doesn't necessarily mean you thank God for everything. We don't thank God for sin, but we thank God in those difficult times. Now, Ephesians 5.20 does say uh, to give thanks for all things, but uh, I think it's, uh, it's measured by the word of God, you know. Uh, it, it has to be taken in, in context. And one of the first things you need to thank the Lord for is for your salvation. Uh, if you're saved, it's because, it's because God gave his son. It's because Jesus gave his life. 
It's because you don't have to do anything to be saved other than believe what's already been, been done. Uh, Colossians chapter 2, verses 6 and 7 he says, as ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith as you've been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. <laughs> you, know, you receive Christ by faith, live by faith, and be thankful. Worship him by, by thanking him. There's some verses in Colossians 3, starting in verse 15. Let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also you are called in one body, and be ye thankful. It's written to the church at Colossae there. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing grace in your hearts to the Lord, and whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. Whatever you're doing, uh, have an attitude of, of thankfulness. That's to the Lord. You know, we live in a day when people spend a lot of time talking about worship and do very little. Uh, a lot of the things going on that are, are called worship are actually exercises in selfishness. They're not doing it because they think God likes it. They're doing it because they like it. And, of course, God should like what I like. <laughs> uh, folks, we need to be careful. God teaches us here about worship. Prayerfulness is part of that. Thankfulness is part of that. And then he says that we need to listen to God. That's part of worship. You know, to really worship the Lord, you need to listen to him. Verse 19, he puts it this way, quench not the spirit. You know, there's problems that people have with the Holy Spirit. Unsaved people resist or even blaspheme the Holy Spirit. But as Christians, we can quench or grieve the Holy Spirit. I think they're part of the same thing. Uh, Ephesians 4, he says, grieve not the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is grieved when we quench him. You know, grieving is his part, quenching is our part. Uh, he's grieved when we quench his work, when we quench his work uh, in our life. And you know, I think we live in a day, well, maybe it's always been this day, when people accept substitutes for the Holy Spirit's work. Uh, you can go to the Christian bookstore and find all kinds of books telling you how to be filled with the Spirit and how to get your answered and how to get people to do this and how to get that. And, uh, instead of going to the Holy Spirit, they come up with a method or, or a, a technique. Uh, some people turn to psychology and they want their, their head to, to feel and their thoughts to be a certain way. Uh, we need to be careful we're not going to something or someone else other than the Holy Spirit. That quenches him. You know, the Holy Spirit wants to lead you and you go to the psychologist or, or you go to the, the latest Christian guru, you know, uh, we need to be let, going straight to the Lord. Uh, God says he, he can help us to understand his word through the Holy Spirit. When you're saved, the Holy Spirit is in, involved in every part of your life, every part. Uh, for instance, uh, Paul said to Timothy in 2 Timothy 6, wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God. And I think a lot of people Instead of stirring up God's work in their life, they quench it. Yeah, God wants to stir them up, and, and he's saying, oh, here's something you can do. Oh, no, I, I couldn't do that. And, and they quench the spirit. James wrote, but be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. That's James 1, verse 21. We need to be careful quenching God's spirit when he's trying to stir us up uh, to do things that are scriptural and godly. In Ephesians 3.16, I love this verse. He says that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. God wants you to be strengthened. You know, as you're facing your day, uh, there's times when, oh, you can, you can just give up, you know. We're, tonight we're going to look in Hebrew is how he says, strengthen the weak knees and, you know, help those that are, that are failing. Uh, we don't have to give up. We can go to God for strength. As Christians, we have God's Holy Spirit. We can be strengthened. Don't quench that. In 2 Corinthians 3, he says, We all with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. 
Don't quench the spirit when he is trying to change you. Listen, I can guarantee you, you and I are not exactly like Jesus yet. <laughs> and there's room for improvement. Uh, although one of our men did say, uh, when he wakes up every morning, he's better, better looking than he was the last day. No, I don't know. Uh, yeah, you know, we are growing in the Lord, but we don't want to quench that. Uh, you know, if God is trying to change you, don't, don't say to him, oh, no, I don't want to do that. Listen, uh, worshiping the Lord means the Lord knows what's best. The Lord, the Lord knows what's right. We're going through things right now that you know, none of us expected a few months ago. And we can say, oh, Lord, what are you doing? Well, the Lord knows what he's doing. We may not know what he's doing, but we know it's a good thing. And, and the changes that he's trying to make in us are going to make us more like Jesus. Don't quench the spirit when it comes to that change. Don't qu quench the spirit when it comes to the strength he wants to give you. Don't quench the spirit when it comes to that work uh, that he calls you to do. Uh, worship the Lord. Now, Jesus said we have to worship him in spirit and in truth with the Holy Spirit, and with the Word of God. And that's, that's the next thing. Quench not the Spirit, verse 20, verse 20. Despise not prophesyings. Prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. Uh, we need to respond to God's Word. Uh, we need to be listening to what God has to say. There's an interesting statement in Acts chapter 17. It's, it's made about the church at Berea. And... Uh, he says, these were more noble than those in Thessalonica in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily whether those things were so. So the church at Berea had a little bit of an edge on Thessalonica. Now, the church at Thessalonica, sounds like it was a great church, but there must have been some kind of weakness, a little backwardness in listening to God's Word. We need to be careful that we don't treat God's Word with contempt. Now, I don't think they were treating God's Word with contempt, but you know, there's sometimes when we just don't listen like we should. We should respond to God's Word. We shouldn't just push it aside. I read a lot. I read fiction, nonfiction, and especially when I'm reading fiction, there's times when I just skip whole bits, you know? Especially, you know, someone will ask me about a book I've read, and they'll mention a name. Well, I, I don't even know the name because I haven't bothered to hardly read it. It's just a word, you know. Well, don't treat God's Word like that. It's all God's Word, and it's all given. Uh, he, he says here, despise not prophesying. Now, they were being taught when the Bible was not complete. So there would have been people coming saying, this is the Word of the Lord. And they'd had to check, that's not the word of the Lord. But it, they had to be careful they didn't despise what God was saying. You know, in, in our day, there's still people saying, this is the word of the Lord, and just making up things. Uh, we, we are able to check, prove all things, hold fast that which is good. And we check it by the word of God. John 17 says, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. You see, the Bible is complete now. We don't add to it. God says don't add to it. Uh, it has God's authority. Uh, it's infallible. It's inerrant. It's sufficient. <laughs> it's enough. Yeah, there, there's people who say, oh, I love the Bible, but I, I want more. No, uh, this is it. This is God's word to us. And it's effective. Uh, back in 1 Thessalonians 2, verse 13, he, he said to their church, when you receive the word of God, which you heard of us, you received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. God's word will work if you'll just open it up and use it. You know, when someone says, thus saith the Lord, we say, prove it. <laughs> Show us uh, where that is. Uh, he said, prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. There's an interesting couple of verses in Romans 16. Uh, verses 25 and 26, where he tells us basically that God has made his word known. Let, let me read them to you. Romans 16, verse 25 says, Now to him that is of power to establish you, according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery, which was kept secret since the world began, but now is made manifest, and by the scriptures of the prophets, 
according to the commandment of the everlasting God, made known to all nations for the obedience of the truth. What he's saying there is God has made his word known. There was a time when some things weren't known. Now God has given us his complete word. Second uh, Peter, he says, we have a more sure word of prophecy. Now what he's talking about there is more sure than a voice from heaven. Listen, if a voice speaks to you from heaven, you won't be sure who that is <laughs> until you check it with God's word. And a more he says in Peter, is God's word, the Bible, whereunto you do well that you take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. What he's saying there was, this wasn't the prophet's message. This was God's message. This wasn't Jesus saying, this is what I think you need to know. There's times when Jeremiah didn't tell you what he thought God, what he knew God wanted them to know, but he said it anyway because it was the word of God. Uh, we have God's word. Uh, we need to, to hold fast that which is good. We need to obey it. We need to believe it. We need to honor it, love it, obey it, proclaim it. Jude even says we, we need to contend for it. <laughs> we need to fight for it. Uh, we worship God in prayer. We worship God in praise. We worship God in truth. There's two more I, I want to look at, and I think I'm going to hold those off until next week, but uh, the next one is godly living worships the Lord. Uh, there, let, let's read verse 22. Abstain from all appearance of evil. Uh, the next verse, and the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless under the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he that calleth you who also will do it. Godly living worships the Lord. It's saying, Lord, you, you're the one. You're the standard. You're the, the holy one. And I want my life to reflect who and what you are. Godly living. And then uh, the last part of the chapter, a Christian fellowship worships the Lord. Uh, this is very basic, isn't it? Living for the Lord is some very basic things. And the Lord it involves uh, praying, reading your Bible, listening to the Holy Spirit, being thankful and obedient, because worship is not an outward ceremony. You know, the world loves to have a ceremony. <laughs> uh, there's people you know, all over the world marching, you know, having ceremonies and all kinds of things, and, and it's just lots of fury and, and words without meaning. God wants our heart. God wants our heart. Uh, it's a heart, worship is a heart that knows and loves the Lord. And I'll ask you a question this morning. Do you know the Lord? A more important question would be, does the Lord know you? Someday we're going to stand before God. And, and the Bible tells us, for somebody's going to say, welcome home. Brothers, the Bible said, Matthew 7, you can look it up. He says, depart from me. I never knew you. Does the Lord know you? Do you have a relationship with God through Jesus Christ? Jesus said he's the only way to God. And I want to encourage you to know the Lord. Don't let anything put you off. And if you are saved, worship the Lord. Worship Him with, with your time. Worship Him with your life. Worship Him in spirit and in truth. Uh, do the things that, that God has said as we look at them in, in His Word. And if you need help or you want to talk to someone about uh, the Lord and about these truths from God's Word, uh, give me a call. Uh, go to our website, uh, fbcbrisbane.org. Uh, there's a lot of help available. And uh, the Lord knows you, the Lord knows your heart, and the Lord wants to have fellowship with you. Uh, he's made a way for, for that to happen. Let's go to him in prayer. Father, we are so grateful that you love us. Lord, thank you for these simple instructions this morning. Help us to just set aside our own prejudice and, and uh, weariness, and, and Lord, help us to just honor you and love you and rejoice in you. I pray, Lord, that we would work in spirit and in truth. God, help us now. We we thank you for your goodness and pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you.